Hi there, Paul Thompson here from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited today to show you Percussion Swarm. The library is 64 gigabytes in compressed format, down from 145 gigabytes of WAV files. It is played by three of London's finest percussionists. So various kind of long notes, swells, all kinds of interesting stuff like that. There are 21 instrument groups in the library, 76 articulations, 30 warped sounds, and then using those warped sounds, we've created 234 snapshot presets for you. Let's jump straight in. This sound is called pitched cloud. The sound is dynamically controllable, but also you can control the density on the variation slider. So for example, loud and most dense, going down to soft and least dense. And these are continuously variable across the range of those controls. The swarmed sticks um, basically grow and then die away. And it's a really beautiful and useful sound. So check this out. Now you have dynamic control again here, but also the variation slider now controls the length of the swarm. Now, if we go uh, across to the pitched cloud here, again, we have hot rod version. And again, you've got the swarmed sticks. Now we also have short uh, hits in here to make all of these instruments um, incredibly useful for making rhythmic tracks as well. And again with the hot rods. So as before, let's check out some of the other sounds. So here are the swarmed sticks using the glockenspiels. And looking at the shorts here. So super delicate sound there. Moving on to the glass version, we can look at the close mics um, on their own with a little bit of the onboard reverb, and that sounds like this. But if we again uh, get a nice balanced mix up with some of the ambient mics, pull the reverb down, um, we can get this kind of sound. and with the swarms. Really lovely. So let's jump across to the next sound, the kalimbas, and we'll go straight onto the shorts for this. And I'm just gonna show you uh, just the close valve mix here. And again, the sound of that, just with the outriggers. And this actually on its own, uh, let's put a bit of reverb on and some of the close mics in, a little bit of ambience and just a single note. And again, we can change the, with the variation slider, um, we can change the speed of that. So a slower performance there. So with the marimbas. Now 
Now we have something really great here, which is a pitched cloud with, played with the fingers. And that gives us this kind of effect. I, it's really lovely. Very, very delicate soft sound. We also have bowed swarms. We've recorded something that isn't just uh, pitched to one note as well. We've called it an atonal cloud uh, because across the library, to be consistent, there are a lot of atonal elements in here. On the marimbas, however, because it's the marimbas, um, it does have a tonal element and it just sounds absolutely lovely. It sounds like this. Now, while we're on the marimbas, I want to jump into the advanced folder and show you some of the different microphone options in the library. So here you've got the close pans. Now, as I mentioned, there are three players on this library positioned in the left of the hall, the center of the hall and the right of the hall. And you've got two sets of close mics. So the CLCCCR, let LCR positions are the individual um, super close mics on the instruments. So there you can hear that the these super close mics on this left hand player have been positioned in the center of the sound stage and it gives you a really really close um, version of that player on on their own the center player and here's the right player so it gives you an amazing degree of isolation if i put all of those three up And you can just hear the players kind of slightly ringing against each other. But that produces a really beautiful sound when you play chords. And then the alternative um, is these lovely valve sets. So I should say those super close mics are ribbon mics. And then we have these valves which are not quite as close. and just give you a slightly different sound. Just check this out. So these are four options. So the first one is a stereo pair on each of the sets and then again mixed into um, the center to give you a really kind of lively, um, immediate and bright sounding uh, mic position with, without too much of the hall in there. So that's an incredibly useful sound. But also we've got a, uh, Bloomline pair of ribbons bang in the center, which again is an amazing sound stage, very, very lively. And then Jake has done two mixes. So the first one is a slightly fuller mix. And then the second one is a closer um, mix using some of those super close elements. So that gives you a slightly more hyped sound, but again, very, very useful to have these different um, different mixes and different mic positions. And you can make your track sound um, uh, amazingly different just by picking the right mics. Um, let's go back in and we'll carry on with the tubular bells. And I go slightly more distant sound on this. And I'm going to go for, actually, I'm going to leave a little bit of the onboard, onboard reverb on. And I'm going to go for the Super Bowl cloud. And just to give you uh, a, a kind of sense of the space here as well with the pitched cloud. And just kind of honing in on this, let's listen to just the close mics, uh, none of the onboard reverb and listen to the short soft sticks.
And then as an alternative, let's just listen to the outriggers and the ambient mics. And there you hear the Super Bowl there. If we go for the Swarmed Super Bowl, um, and let's change the mix up again. Let's just go for a bit of Super Close in there. Now, what about the tubular bells played with metal sticks? Let's go again for the Swarmed. And let's put a bit of the tree in this time. And just to kind of shape that a little bit, it's quite a strong sound. You can, um, well, if you if you check out the sound of the uh, metal sticks here, you can hear it's incredibly crisp uh, sound there. So moving on, we're going to go for the chimes and phones now. Here we've got a really interesting sound. These are the soft stick shorts. put a little bit of the onboard reverb to get um, extra element of that kind of other otherworldly sound and we get this kind of effect. And of course our swarmed uh, bows on this occasion. So here we've taken what can be a really kind of cheesy instrument, um, these wah chimes, um, which you can imagine they're, they're like hand chimes, but they kind of go wah, 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 wah. You've got a, a, a way to um, modulate the frequency on them. Um, but actually what happens if you just kind of uh, play them in this really kind of long cloud style of playing? It sounds like this. And then taking those bows and just making single notes from them. Just getting such a lovely sound. And a sound that you really, uh, a lot of these sounds are really unfamiliar. So that it's incredibly useful to use these in place of something that's kind of sounds, you know, any kind of style, something that sounds similar to that, you could replace it with this and it really it's really intriguing to listen to because you're not quite sure what you're hearing. Anklungs, again, an absolutely fabulous sound, uh, but here uh, you can create this lovely cloud. using them swarmed. Or alternatively, we've put in the shorts. And actually, let's just focus in on the super close. Uh, no hall sound, no reverb, sounds like this. So crotale is one of my favorite instruments. It can be very hard to tame, uh, and that sounds like this. It's 
So as you can hear, um, going right up to the top there and then switching quite hard down into the very sparse version. Um, looking at the swarmed things as well, let's put the uh, let's put the dynamics back up to the top. And these are really nice. Just listening to the super close on their own. Now this is quite an unusual one, the handbell carousel. Um, you may have seen these. So I'm going to show you first of all what they actually sound like when you're uh, twirling them. It's a, it's a, let me play it. So with these, you spin them around and then the bells are all hit, but each bell is tuned separately. So actually you get a really interesting, um, they, they're never totally in tune, but you get a really interesting sound from them. And it sounds like this. Now, where it really comes into its own is when you play them with the bows. And I just love that. So because this is a toy, basically, they're not, you know, the tuning is, is not precise on them, but it's close enough to get you a really kind of useful rub there. And actually, if you play them as a cloud, um, this is what I, what I love. And you hear there, as each little note comes in, the tuning is just kind of moving slightly and it's um, incredibly useful. Obviously not going to be perfect for everything, but that's um, it's a great little sound. Really like that. Now we get into the drum section. So these from M to U in the library, uh, which is the second half of the library, we have untuned percussion but again recorded in exactly the same way. So we've got first up our atonal cloud. So let me put up some uh, mics here for this. So these are DAFs. And you've got the same kind of dynamic control and also uh, variation giving you sparse to dense. We've got the same thing performed, but with the fingers. And then, of course, we've recorded these just as single hits as well, because there are so many really unusual and fabulous instruments in here that it's great to have these recorded singly. Now, what you can do with these is if we jump over into the close pan versions, you can take each of these players short hits. Which are very different drum sounds and you can take those and split them off, pan them as you wish. Um, and create a separate rhythm track using three individual players. So very, very useful there. So what about these Damaroos? Again, fingers. And short, soft stick version. Romanas. And if we go just super close. Uh, 
And again, you can split those off and use the three players separately. Swarmed fingers. And I've, I've added a shape to that as well. But actually, if I just leave the variation slider down, so you hear the longest one and the uh, dynamic up. You can hear beautifully recorded, really lovely sounds there. Um, over to our batters. Uh, let's set up a mix again. Maybe just the super close in the outriggers here. Swarmed fingers. All right, tonal cloud. And let's just get the completely dry soft sound so you can hear what these sound like. So four different batter sounds. And again, you split the players up on all of these. Um, Udus, let's actually just listen to the mid mics here. Um, and let's go for the swarm. Now you've got two options here for the short hits. But you've also got these great soft hits. And if we pop those up on the super close. Or you can go for a kind of super epic, uh, loads and loads of reverb. Or even the short, soft ones. Now you can also switch these into two-handed playing mode, which means that you just get uh, an octave apart. Just makes it a little bit easier to play. Let's check out the rototoms. And I'm loading here the Blumline pair first up. And then let's check out our short soft sticks. And going for our kind of really great intense stereo sound. Now these tongue drums, um, again, like the hang drums, they're not they're not particularly thought of as you know a kind of full playable tuned instrument, but they pitch really beautifully. We've got Super Bowl clouds. And also swarmed versions. I'll put some of the close put some of the close mic in here. And also with the Super Bowl. And then shorts played with sticks. But also with the Super Bowl. We also got these ones played with the fingers, which is a, a really lovely sound. So let's jump in. Uh, let's put a mix up mid mics, a little bit of the outriggers. So just a slightly slightly heading towards the mid sound on this one sounds like this
But if we switch over to the shorts and just listen to these close mics mixed together. Let's jump into the warp section. I'm going to give you a quick example of some of these kind of uh, source sounds that we've used, these 30 great warps. And it's incredibly easy to just uh, start changing these sounds from the front panel. Um, let's put some really deep chorus on this. And if we want to change the sound, we can just, it's super easy. You can alter the settings uh, very quickly and easily. So even with the unpitched stuff, you can get some really uh, interesting sounds from these warps. That's quite a useful one there. Um, and then finally, let's have a quick look at this one. Now within the snapshots in this sound, we've got all kinds of different variations here as well. So for example, the default sound here, and then going to Ice Queen as the preset. sands so that is percussion swarm a fantastic really deep palette of creativity for you to use in your productions everything from the just beautifully recorded and multi-percussionist sounds in the hall all the way through to these fantastic warped sounds. Um, there's lots of short sounds in there for you to use percussively. There's lots of long sounds to use as these kind of evolving beds, alternatives to the kind of standard stuff, the standard long string notes and things like that. Thank you very much for watching and we really look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.